Well, praise the Lord, everyone. Welcome to Transform Life Church, Church Online. It's amazing what media can do. It's amazing what electronic can, can do. And certainly, as I said this morning, this is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. The scripture goes on to say, All oh, magnify the Lord and let us exalt his name together. And then it says, and this is true today, if it ever was a time that it was true, it said, let everything that have breath praise ye the Lord. And certainly it is an honor and a privilege to have breath. It's an honor and privilege to have the capability to give God some praise. And I thank God for those of you who are part of Transform Life Church who are tuning in, not only here on Facebook Live, but you're also tuning in on the conference line. We do have a word for you, but before we go into the word today, I think it's important for us to do as we typically would do anytime we come into God's house or we come before the Lord, and that is for us to bow our heads and close our eyes and go before the Lord in prayer. Grace and kind God, we thank you for this moment that you've given us. We thank you for this day. Certainly today is a day that we've never seen before, but it's a day that you've created and a day that you're still in control of everything. I ask even, Father, today that you will comfort those who have lost those during this uh, COVID-19 and there are other people who are passing away for other reasons. But God, your word says that you never leave us nor forsake us. And certainly we can rest assured in times like these that you'll be a God that comforts those who need comfort, strengthen those who need strength and give joy in the midst of sorrow. We thank you for the things you've done. We thank you for the things we know you're able to do. I ask even today, Father, that you will go into the places where those who are working in this COVID-19, uh, those who are uh, on the front line, as it is said, the nurses, the practitioners, even the people who work in the grocery stores, the mortician who are still burying bodies. And God, we thank you that we know you're a God who is a present help in the time of trouble. I ask, Father, as I always do, that your will will continue to be done and that everything we do and say gives you glory and honor. We thank you again for the things you've done. We thank you for the things that we know you're able to do, even today as we speak these words. I ask, God, that these words would be comfort, that these words would be direction for those who need direction. But most of all, God, that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart will be acceptable in thy sight because you are our strength, you are our redeemer. We ask these things in Jesus name we pray. Amen. And praise the Lord again. Uh, I, I want to remind those of you again who are watching us on Facebook Live, those who are, may be listening to us on the conference line, that we do realize today is what we call Palm Sunday. It is a Sunday before Resurrection Sunday as it relates to us celebrating not only the death of Jesus Christ, but also the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And one thing that we want to do with Transform Life Church, although we will not be in the building, we still want to have a celebration. And even as my Facebook post said, uh, this has also helped us to reflect, to realize that when it comes to Resurrection Sunday, April 12th is not really the day that he was resurrected anyways. It's just a day that we set aside, just as we do for Christmas, Christmas celebrates the birth of Jesus Christ. Easter, or what we know as Resurrection Sunday, celebrates the resurrection of Jesus Christ. But be that as I said that, we also want to make it special. So I invite all of you to tune in on next Sunday to our resurrection service online. Uh, we have some great things planned. Even this week, check out our Facebook page. We're asking all of our Transform Life Church people, members, family to invite someone to tune in to Transform Life Church online next Sunday, which is April the 12th, which will be Resurrection Sunday. We still are going to celebrate. And as I said, when we get back into the building, we will have a grand celebration. But every Sunday that we have an opportunity to wake up or every day that we have an opportunity to wake up, it's all because because Jesus died and Jesus resurrected. So my point is, is next Sunday, I want all of you to tune in. We're going to have multiple times that you'll be able to hear our resurrection message. We're also going to do some giveaways. We want to be a blessing to our community. We want to be a blessing to those who might be struggling in the midst of all that's going on. So again, I challenge you to stay tuned, uh, stay informed to our Facebook page. We will have what we're going to do, how we're going to do it, how you'll be uh, able to tap into these giveaways on next Sunday, which is Resurrection Sunday. 
I'm not going to uh, do a lot of preliminaries today before I go to the word, but I do have a word for you. I'm also going to allow you to know on next Sunday, I will have a few people that will be available to answer calls. Also today, this, uh, those of you who are listening to this Facebook live, it is now a little after 11 AM, which is our normal worship time. I plan on going maybe 35 to 40 minutes during this presentation of the gospel today. And what I am going to do, those of you who have a prayer request or those of you that have maybe a need that you need to talk to a pastor and you want to talk to a live pastor, I'm going to make myself available for a little while after this message airs. And what I need you to do, if you need prayer, if you have a special prayer request, if you're in a crisis, you're feeling depressed, you're feeling distraught, you're feeling helpless and hopeless. Call this number 937-773-4004, 937-773-4004. And I personally will be here for at least in half an hour or so, as long as you keep calling or whatever, to be here to pray with you, to give you the word of the Lord and to give you words of comfort, certainly in this time that if we ever needed the Lord, we need him right now. Without further ado, we're going to go right to the word today. I want to take our thought from a very familiar passage of the word of God. And I want to look at Mark chapter number four, Mark chapter number four. And this, again, is a very familiar passage. I'm going to elaborate on quite a bit of this gospel of Mark as it relates to bringing forth what I believe the Lord has for us to hear today. And the Bible said, let, it, let everyone have an ear to hear. So I hope that you're not only tuning in, but you have an ear to hear what God is saying, that you might be encouraged as we have on our TLC for radio. It's inspiration, educational, and transformational. But here in Mark, again, a very familiar chapter, Mark chapter number four. And I'm just going to read a few verses, but I will elaborate quite a bit on this chapter four, somewhat of chapter five, and then we will conclude, I believe, in chapter number six. Verse number one says, And he began again to teach by the seaside, and there was gathered unto him a great multitude. So he entered into a ship and set into the sea, and the whole multitude was by the sea on land. And he taught them many things by parable and said unto them the doctrine. Hearten, behold, there went a sower to sow, and it came to pass as he sowed, he fell by the wayside, and the fowls of the air came and devoured it. And some fell on stony ground where it had not much earth, and immediately sprang up because of no death. Now again, as you know, if you've read this before, and even those who are part of Transform Life Church, it was, uh, I think, a week or two ago that we in turn taught from this. I want you to drop down to the conclusion because it goes in to continue to teach this parable. And at the conclusion of Mark chapter number four, the Bible says that now there's kind of a shift that, that transpires here. It seems like it's almost even misplaced. Uh, verse number 36 says this, uh, verse number 35, let's look at 35. In the same day when the Eden was come, he said unto them, now listen, he said, let us pass over the other side. And when they had sent away the multitude, they took him as he was in the ship. And there, and there was also with him other little ships. And there arose a great storm of war, war, wind, and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And when he was in the hinder part of the ship, asleep on the pillow, and they awake him and said unto him, Master, Carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind, the wind ceased and there was a great calm. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? I want to use for a thought on this morning. Uh, the rehearsal is over. The rehearsal is over. I'm going to say it one more time. The rehearsal is over. If as I was at church, and again, those of you who listen to me on the conference line, I'm going to ask you if you would one more time, please mute your phone. But if I was at Transform Life Church, which I am here, just me and one other person, we're practicing safe distancing or social distancing and all that other stuff. But if, if, if I was at church 
like I normally, and I, I tell you just to tell someone, uh, just tell them the rehearsal is over. Here in Mark chapter number four, when you study this and when you read this, you will see that pretty much this whole chapter, Jesus himself is teaching the importance, watch now, of not just hearing the word. And even in that, he compares the word to a person sowing seed. So he compares the word to a seed that's sown. He goes on to give the components in verse number 20, if you're going to sow the seed, if the seed is going to sow, and he goes through the whole presentation that there are some that's going to fall on hard ground. There's, he calls it stony ground. There are some that's going to fall and it's going to be ate up or devoured by the fowls. There, there are those that, uh, because it's not a good ground, that the seed is not going to wash now, fall into good ground. But he goes in to say that there is going to be a ground. That's going to be the type of ground that the seed or the word that comes forth is going to find this good ground. But, but he goes into verse number 20 and he, he, he moves from just hearing the word to allowing you to know the components of, of good ground. He, he says, not, number one, you got to hear the word. Number two, you got to receive it, which allows me to know that everybody that hears a word does not necessarily mean they receive it. He says, so you hear it, you receive it, and lastly, how do you know that the word is received? He says, it brings forth fruit. Ha. So Jesus now is taking us through this process to help us to understand that seeds are being sowed as it relates to the word. All the word is not going to fall on good ground, but there's going to be a word and there's going to be a person that this seed falls on good ground. So the way that you know it falls on good ground, number one, you have to first hear it. Faith cometh by hearing. And then as you hear it, you got to receive it. And then as it's received, the proof of hearing and receiving is it now brings forth fruit. He also goes on to now compare another thing. He begins to talk about a candle, which we know to be a light. He said that this light, uh, this candle should not be hid. Uh, should it be put on a candlestick? Should it be, a, been a, uh, be in a place where you can see this light, especially if it's dark? In other words, light is meant to be seen. What does that have to do with us, Pastor Hamilton? I'm glad you asked. Right now, in this particular time, we're living in a very dark time. We're living in a very dark situation. This is the time. And I've said it the last three weeks that I've been on Facebook Live. This is the time that those of us who are believers, those of us who the Bible calls as the light of the world. It's not a time for us to sit back. It's not a time for us to be passive. But this is a time for us to shine. What do you mean shine? This is a time that we have to speak up and allow the world to know that Jesus still is the answer. We have to speak up. And as I was telling him on, on the conference line this morning, I, I woke up with this song on my mind that the my, that song says, uh, the Lord has the final say. I have no reason to, to fear. I have no reason to be afraid because God has the final say. So Jesus here is allowing us to know as a light we should not be hid in a, in a time of darkness. He goes on to verse number 31. He begins to explain when it comes to our faith, when it comes to the word, because again, faith comes by hearing. Watch now. So in turn, it is the word of God that comes that builds our faith. He emphasizes here, watch now, that it's not the quantity of the faith. It's not the quantity of the seed. It's not the quantity of the word, but it's the quality of it. He uses analogy. He used the parable. He talks about the mustard seed. And those of us who've been around church for any length of time, those of us who've went to Sunday school and heard about how small a mustard seed, if you can just have the faith, the size of a mustard seed. So Jesus here, he begins to unpack and he begins to talk about that a mustard seed. When you look at it, it really is one of the smallest seed, if not the smallest seed. But because the mustard seed, watch now, is not of large size, of not large quantity, but large quality. It has the capacity to bring more, more fruit than a big seed. 
He, he, he allows us to know that that same seed that, that in turn can be ate up by the fowl is going to be that same seed. Watch now. That same seed, that that same fowl that wanted to take that seed now rests or gets shade from that seed. So again, let me let you know something, brothers and sisters, when we begin to talk about the word that has been put, as I think it was David said, the word that I've hid in my heart that I might not sin against him, that same word that now brings forth that seed that or is that seed that now brings forth faith. Don't allow the enemy to, to make you think today that you need to have a whole lot of faith. Matter of fact, when I was a kid, they used to sing a song, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. You don't need a whole lot. Just use what you got. So when it comes to faith and when it comes to understanding faith, it is not the quantity of faith, but it is the quality of faith. How do you know you have quality faith? When the enemy comes in like a flood, when the enemy is trying to distract you, when the enemy is trying to destroy you, when the enemy is trying to get you to walk in faith, it is that quality of faith that might not be big faith or large faith, but it is that faith now that has the opportunity opportunity to produce. I wish I had at least one amen. So when we understand that, he allows us to know. And I want to remind you today, my friend, my brothers and sisters, when it comes to faith, it's not the quantity of faith. It has to be quality, the quality that's going to produce, the quality that's going to bring forth the fruit. He says the mustard seed, it grows up and it seems to be the greatest of the earth. Now notice he doesn't stop there. And verse number 33, he goes on to say this, and, and with man such parable, he spoke uh, with the word unto them, watch now, and they was able to hear it. They heard it, but remember I told you earlier that when Jesus began to talk about the word being sowed, when Jesus began to talk about the seed coming forth, he said, it's not only that you need to hear it. But he also gives you some other components. Remember in verse 22 or verse 20, he said that we need to hear it. We need to receive it and we need to bear forth fruit. So it sounds like a performance to me. It sounds like that when the word comes forth and that seed is sown in us, that in order for it to bring forth fruit, it has to have great, great quality. But that great quality is able to perform. I, I believe the Bible says that he that was now started a good work in you is able to perform it is able to bring it to pass is able to bring forth some fruit so the importance now when you begin to understand here in this text that Jesus now is teaching them when you understand that when Jesus talked he just did not talk like some of us talk when Jesus talked he had a reason for talking he made a statement he asked the question or he gave a commandment so here we understand that the Bible says that Jesus now he begins to teach them. He's teaching them and he's gone through a rehearsal with them. He's allowing them to know that you have something in you and that which is in you, it should brought now perform something. It should bring forth something. He allows them to know that you are a light. He, he talks about, or in the Bible, it talks about how we are the light of the world and he, he brings it out of the, it seems like it comes out of nowhere where he begins to talk about the light. So now Jesus is teaching in this. He's gone through rehearsal. So now in turn, he wants to begin to show them that what we rehearse, how do you perform it? So when we understand this, then we see how this story comes together. The Bible says in verse number 35, that in that same day, he said, now after he teaches them, after he instructs them, after he goes through this rehearsal with them, the Bible says, now Jesus brings them together and he says to them, watch what he says. He said, let let us pass over unto the other side. So he allows them to know that we're getting ready to get in that boat and we go on to the other side. The NIV says this same text that Jesus says, let us go over to the other side. Jesus is always, even in the midst of storm, Jesus is always in the midst of dark days. Jesus is always in the midst of when the enemy brings in evil. He's always about, watch now, moving us forward. He's always about us producing fruit. Even when it seems like sometime our law, our life has been put to a halt, our life has put to a stall, Jesus is still trying to move us forward. He's always trying, watch now, saints of God, to level us up. 
So when we see here in this text, the Bible shows here that Jesus now tells them we're getting ready to go to the other side. He now here in this text, he begins to show his humility. He, he shows his humanness because the Bible allows us to know that they begin to move out. They find themselves moving out. And then the Bible says that all kinds of things are going on. And in the midst of all that's going on, the Bible says that Jesus goes to sleep in the bottom of the boat. Now, many times when I've talked this text or I've preached this text, I've talked about the bottom of the boat if you've ever been in a cruise. But for this particular point, uh, that's not even an emphasis at this particular point. When you look, though, at this particular body of water that Jesus now and the disciples go out on, if you think about the geographical point as it relates to this now being the Sea of Galilee, if you take some time to study, you will see in the Old Testament this has another name in the New Testament it has another name but at this particular point we're just going to call it as it is the Sea of Galilee. The Sea of Galilee is approximately 12 and a half miles wide or 12 and, mi 12 and a half miles long and seven and a half miles wide. What does it have to do with anything? When you look at this body of water that means that this body of water is surrounded by hills. So because it now is surrounded by hills, I'm going to preach in a well, what would happen is the cool air would come between these two mountains and it would now sweep up on the water and in turn it made this body of water prone to storms. In other words, it was a, a, it was a particular place that people knew when they went on this water because of where it was located, because of the geographic position that it was in, it was storm prone. Oh, can I pause for a station identification? Some of us it seemed like the enemy is allowing us to think that our life is storm prone. We get out of one thing and it seems like we jump into another. Some of you before the COVID-19 hit, you, you just got out of one storm and it seemed like you're now into another storm. But be of good cheer because the God that sits high, but he looks low, he's not intimidated by your storm. He's not intimidated by your situation. He's not intimidated by what you're going through because no no matter what it is, he's still in control of every situation. So when you look here at this text, you will see now that they now are in this body of water. What is the point, Pastor Hamilton? When you look here, this particular body that was known to have storms, not just typical storms, but violent storms. In other words, the way that Jesus instructed them, watch now, was a storm-prone direction. Many times the path, the path or the, the direction that Jesus sends us on, we oftentimes think it's going to be a smooth path. It's going to be a nice path. It's going to be a path of no trouble, a path of no crying, a path of no pain. But I came to tell you and I came to remind you that in the midst of no matter what you're going through, and we say it cliche, we say it oftentimes, but in the midst of your, what you're going through, if God sends you there, that same God that sent you there or sends you there has the capability to bring you out. I, I wish I had time today uh, to bring the three Huber boys and know about how God sends you sometime on a path that's stormy. I wish I had time to bring Daniel. I wish I had time to bring Paul in here to talk to you, to allow you to know that even though when God sends you a way that you don't understand, he's still a God that makes a way out of no way. Uh, so when we look at this, brothers and sisters, understand this. The Bible says in 37, and there, there arose now a great storm and the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. The NIV says this, it's a fear, uh, it's a fierce storm. Another version says that this storm came without warning, kind of like what happened to us. And you hear the president talk about how up until this particular point, how uh, America was doing great, the economy was doing great, the unemployment was at its lowest level, and then all of a sudden, COVID-19, this great storm hit us. Didn't just hit us, it hit all over the world. So everything seemed to go, be going well. And then, th then our lives sometimes are, are just turned upside down. 
But when God tells us to go and without warning, and here comes a storm, now notice uh, 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 it's a violent storm. Just ain't a simple storm. I think it's important for us to understand this today. This storm here, and, and understand this because I've had multiple messages on Facebook Live. I had multiple teaching, and a lot of people are saying the reason why we're in is the church has been disappointed, disobedient. The reason why we're in where we're in because the world is corrupt. And all that may be true. But understand this point this particular storm, it wasn't because they were being disobedient. But it was while they was obeying God, because it's now, we know Jesus is God. It's now Jesus telling them, get in the boat and we go on to the other side. So it wasn't like Jonah who was, dis, who was disobedient. It wasn't like other people that we know that was disappointed, and now they find themselves in the storm. So many times we, we find ourselves in a storm and, and, and people will swear because we've been disobedient. Let me make this applicable to, to those you listen to. This virus has no rhyme or reason to it. It is hitting pastors, preachers, bishops, saved, unsaved, mothers, faithful people, unfaithful people. So there are those out there who are pointing their fingers and saying, mm hmm. Y'all know, I just keep it real. I'm getting, I'm getting ready to finish this message. Yeah, the reason why they got that is because they was disobedient. The reason why they're sick, because it's passing over some and not getting some. Now, now understand, so this scripture allows you to know, yes, there is some storms that come to our life because we've been disobedient, but there are also some of us who go through this storm not because we've been disobedient. Matter of fact, I can, pre pre I can bring up another scenario where the Bible says that, that a man is blind, and, and when they come to Jesus, and they talk to Jesus, and they say, uh, why is he blind? Who committed sin? And, and Jesus backs him up and says, hold up now, wait a minute. Yeah, there is some sickness. Yeah, there are some things that come because of disobedient, but this it's for the glory of God. I came to be a witness. I came to be a testimony. The enemy tried to kill me, and I'm praying that I'm almost at the end of this, but the fact that I still have breath in my body, I'm a testimony. I'm a witness that although, yes, there are some who are dying, and we feel bad for them, we're praying for them, but there are also those who are living in the midst of this. So whether we live or whether we die, we know as believers, guess what? We still win. Don't allow that stinking thinking and that corrupted talking to corrupt your mind because I came to remind you rehearsal's over. But the point I'm making here is this text teaches us something. There are some storms that come in our life not because we've been disobedient, but these storms are coming. Watch now to help us to rehearse so when the other storms come, we've been prepared and we know how to perform. So the storm tells us, brothers and sisters, Two things. You can obey God. You can obey Jesus. And a storm will still break out. Number two, he can even be with you. And the storm hit. My God. But the fact that he's with me allows me to know I can't panic. I can't throw in a towel. I can't quit. Tap somebody in your house. And if nobody's in your house, open your old mouth and tell, tell yourself, even though I might be in a storm, God is with me. So let me bring this message around. The Bible says in verse 38 that Jesus, now he's in the hinder part of his ship. He's asleep on the pillows and they woke him up. And here's what they said. Master, carest now that we perish? Carest thou not that we perish? The disciples are waking him up. Now imagine, some of these disciples, they were fishermen. So you will see as you read this chapter, Mark, that la later in this same chapter, they get in another storm. And that's that same storm where now Jesus walks on the water and Peter walks on the water to meet him. But understand this, these were fishermen in this boat and Jesus, he's a carpenter's son. So now they're going to Jesus, who's the former carpenter's son or the carpenter's son, and they're kind of trying to rebuke him. They're trying to get him told. They're trying to straighten him out. And here's what they say, Master, 
Because remember, Jesus is the one that told them, let's get in the boat and let's go to the side. So they said, Master, do, do you not care that we're going to die? In other words, you got us out here to die. Let me help you today. I believe right now there are those who are in this situation and you're asking God the same question. Did you, did you get me in this to die? Now, now understand this. I believe they did the, the thing, the right, they did the right thing. They just went about it the wrong way. We sometimes can do the right thing, but do it the wrong way. If we have a problem, the Bible says that we are to cast our cares on him. If we have situations that we cannot handle, we are to go ask and you shall receive. So they did right by going to him, but they did wrong by how, the, how they went to him and the question that they asked. Again, let me, pass, let me say it again so you get it. The right thing is they went to Jesus. The wrong thing is asking him, do you care if we make it? Now, this message has to be relevant because there are some of you, no doubt under the sound of my voice, that you've allowed fear to grip you in the midst of this virus and your question that you're asking God, do you care if I make it? So it's not asking the question, it's asking the right question. Now let me move on. Now, now again, don't get too holy. Because there's no rhyme and there's no reason to what's going on as it relates to some people. And I, again, I know I said it twice, I'm going to say it one more time. There are those of you. And that's why God had you to tune in to Facebook Live, had you to listen to this uh, conference call so you can hear this to remind you, if you're asking God, God, do you really care? Because when you see how it's passing one person, but it's getting another person, one person is living and one person might die. So the, the devil is, is uh, making us in our mind come to the question, God, do you really care? Make sure if you go ask him the question, ask him the right question. Because the fact that you're still alive, I feel the Holy Ghost right there. The fact that when you deserve to die, God kept you alive. The, the fact that what you deserve as it relates to punishment, God's grace and mercy covered you. The fact that the Bible says that yet when we were sinners, he died for us. If you ever had to doubt what God has done, if you ever had to doubt if God loves you, just look back in your life and see what he's already done. Even as we come up to the resurrection Sunday, to the point that Jesus died and he didn't have to die, he took on the sins of the world, and then now because things aren't acting the way you want them to act, the world is in this uh, uh, crisis, the world is in this storm, and now we're coming to God acting like he's dumbing down to the point that he's Jesus, he's little G or little God instead of the big God who looks like that's able, who, who, who looks high or sits high and is able to do everything everything about your situation and then now we're coming and asking him do you really care my God let me tell you this God didn't change his mind he didn't change his mind when he told him before they got into the boat because the Bible says, and I keep saying God, we know it's Jesus here, but we know Jesus is God. So in this text, he manifests his humanness, but yet he also manifests his divineness. And we're going to see that in a minute. But the point I'm trying to get you to see and the point I want to encourage you today, that God has not changed his mind just because this virus is going on. If God said you're going to live and God said that you're going to live, you're going to live. He has not changed his mind. The Bible says in Ephesians, or uh, 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 not Ephesians, but the Bible says that there's a point for a man to be born and there's a time to die. This virus has not changed God's mind. And it did not change his mind as it relates to Jesus now being on this ship and this storm coming. When you look at what's going on, some people are going to get the virus, some people are not going to get it. Again, but God has not changed his mind. Do not allow the enemy to trick you, to make you think, and ask him, do you care? This question is circumstantially. It's influenced by the circumstance. And in turn, it's now changing the theology based on the situation. 
Meaning the theology now is based on what's going on versus what God's word says he is and what God's word says he can, he can do. That's why he did not limit himself when now Moses said, he goes to Pharaoh, he said, who, you, who should I tell him sent me? He didn't want to limit himself, so he said, just tell her I am. He's still the I am. He's still the great I am. So whatever we need him to be, he's still that. Y'all got to believe that today. I got to get around the corner because I, I got to close this message down. So the Bible says that they, that they go to Jesus. They, they wake him up. And the first thing they ask him, okay, look now, do you care? Doesn't that sound like the children of Israel that when Moses was leading them out of bondage and when trouble start coming, the first thing they start doing is mumbling or murmuring, complaining, ask Moses, you done got us out here to kill us. After Jesus had been provided fresh manna for them and he had provided all that they needed, clothes. And then now they come, look now, hear me today. And I'm saying this with passion. The thing that's going to get you through is not looking at what you're going through, but you got to look at what God has already done for you. What God has already manifested in your life, and that's going to be the testimony. All that was rehearsal, and that rehearsal is no over. Now it's time for you to perform in the midst of the storm. So the Bible says, he arose, he woke up. And when he got up, after the disciples asked him this question, watch what it says he did. It says, he rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, peace be still, and the wind ceased, and there was great calm. So when you understand that, and that's why I keep saying, I keep saying God and Jesus, and understand that Jesus is God. So he woke up like a man, but he spoke up like God. The Bible says he, he, he now says to the wind, and says to the wave, and synchronize themselves, and they stopped at the same time. Now, really, to understand this, you got to look at the Amplified. The Amplified said this. He arose and he rebuked the wind, said to the sea, hush now, be still, be muzzled. And the wind ceased, sank to rest as exhausted as beating, and there immediately a great calm. Now, what does this tell you in my closing? This tells you that storms have the capability to speak to you. Storms have the capability to prophesy to you. But what you have to do, you have to do like the Bible says he told Ezekiel. He said, Ezekiel, don't, eat, don't only prophesy to the bones, but you got to prophesy and you got to speak to the winds. Those you listening to me today, people might be sick all around you. All chaos might be going on around you, but you got to learn in the midst of this situation that up to this has been rehearsal. Everything that you went through has been to prepare you for this moment. And instead of letting your storm speak to you, you got to open up your mouth and begin to speak to your storm. You got to prophesy this storm. The Bible says Jesus spoke to the storm. And guess what the storm? It muzzled. It shut up. Because up in this point, that storm was speaking to them. It was speaking you're going to die. It was speaking that you're going to sink. It was speaking that God don't love you. It was speaking that you ain't coming out. It was speaking that in turn, all this is going to be the same way. Things ain't going to change. But what Jesus did, instead of allowing the storm to speak, he opened up his mouth and he spoke to the storm. You need to muzzle your storm up right now. I wish I had about three amens. Amen. You can tell your mind, I ain't going to live in fear. You can tell your kids that God is not brothers as far as forsake us. You can open up your mouth and even when you go to Walmart and it seems like the shelves are getting scarce and scared, you can open up your mouth and speak to the storm and say, just like the Bible says, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed, so I will not be forsaken and my seed will not beg. You got to have that confidence today because rehearsal is over. It's now time to perform. He said it to them after he, he began to open up his mouth and he shut the storm up. Then the Bible says he said to them, why are you so fearful? He had just taught them that you have seed. He just taught them that the seed you have to receive it. He just taught them that you hear it, you receive it, and then now you have to perform it. It has to bring forth some fruit. 
So now he has to demonstrate to them that what he just taught them because in the next chapter you're going to see when they get off the boat, as soon as they get off the boat, the Bible says this. Immediately, watch now, them words are there. They get off from the storm. The storm stops uh, raging. They, they get out of fear. They get to the other side, just like he said. And this is the point. This is a nugget. If they would only, if somebody would have spoke up when the storm came and the storm hit the boat, if someone would have or asked the question instead of does he care, if someone would have said, what did he say before the storm? What did he say before we got in the situation? What has God said to you before COVID-19? What has he spoke to you about 2020? God's word. He's not a man that he should lie. He's not lying. Don't allow this circumstance to make you have circumstantial faith. So the Bible says that immediately after they get to the storm and they get off the boat, watch what happens. A person who's demon possessed runs up to Jesus. And when they run up to Jesus, the Bible says that he cast that devil out of that. And then they're scared of him. And then he begins to say that he's delivered. If that's not enough, then the Bible says, watch now, then Jairus comes up. And then Jarvis needs his daughter. This is all practice. This is all rehearsal. Because he's getting ready to dispatch the disciples out two by two by themselves with the things that they have been practicing, the things that they've been seeing him doing. Now he wants them to do it. Y'all got to hear this. So the Bible says that they get off the boat, the demon possessed, then Jarvis comes, Jesus, I need you to heal my daughter. And then while he's on his way to Jarvis's house, the Bible says that the lady with the issue comes. I watch the chronological, all these things happen. Whatever's happened in your life, God is not, watch now, an accident God. He's intentional. He intentionally set them up. Everything that you've been through up to this point has been intentionally, it has happened for a purpose. So you're able to get through this storm. You're able to get through this rain because you've been practicing, but now it's time to perform. The thing that got you through, the thing that helped you in the last time you got yourself in the situation is the same thing that you got to use right now. It still works. So he goes chronologically. So then he heals the lady with the issue of blood. Then the Bible says that they come up and tell Jarvis, your daughter is dead. So then Jairus says, it's okay. No, Jesus says, no, if you can just have faith, remember, it's not the quantity of faith. It is the quality of faith. You got to have quality of faith. If you can just have some faith, man, this can happen. So the Bible says that Jesus, hear me now, he now goes to Jairus' house. And when he gets to the house, there's people sitting around looking to see what's going to happen. Trust me, there's people that came on Facebook. There's people that came around just to see. They heard Brian T. Hamilton had COVID-19. Is he dying? Is he in the hospital? But God has brought them around and is keeping them around to let them see that what I preached, that what I've been taught. Watch now, whether we live or we die, we still win. But at the end of the day, God is still in the healing business. God still has all power. God still has the final say. It's not in my might, but it's in his might. It's his grace and mercy that's kept me. And his grace and mercy is still going to keep me. Now, the Bible says, so they get up there. And there's some people who are looking around. Some will say that they have professional cry criers that people would mourn. And the Bible says that when he gets in the house... He puts them out and he only brings a few people in them. See, some of you don't understand the reason why God had to uh, uh, separate you because you've been around some people that's been killing your faith, been killing your dream, been killing your praise, been killing your joy. So he's had to take this time to separate you from some people and get you around some people and people in your house that you're praying together, trusting God for the same thing. Wish I had one amen. So the Bible says he puts them out. He raises her up. Now notice now. He raises her up. And then as the story goes on, then the Bible says, hear me now. He does more miracles. He has them with him. He's teaching them. They're rehearsing. So then the Bible says that now they go and he's doing all these healings. He's casting out these devils. But then the Bible says, it's amazing now that some can't be healed because of the lack of faith. It wasn't that they didn't hear it. 
It was the fact that they didn't receive it. You got to hear it. You got to receive it. And then you got to let it perform. It says then that Jesus then calls them together. And it says he sends them out. Watch now. Two by two. You don't have a big group no more. You don't have a big audience no more. You ain't having, you ain't having a church assembly now. You ain't having church assembly. I'm going to send you out two by two. Then he tells them, if you go some places and they don't receive you, shake the dust off. And watch now. It says he commissions them. We've been rehearsing, but guess what? Rehearsal is over. It's now time to take that which you saw and transform life church. You've heard this more. You've heard this multiple times. You got to hear it one more time. He sends them out two by two and watch now. If you follow, I think in chapter number six, it says, and guess what they do? They start healing and they start casting out devils. Rehearsal now is over. It was now time to perform. Today, you got to understand some of you are struggling. And I understand the struggling. I understand the struggle. You're used to, hear me, you're used to when you find yourself sick, somebody else laying hands on you. Rehearsal is over. The Bible says, these signs shall follow them that believe. They shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Rehearsal is over. You might have to, in the midst of this COVID-19, your pastor might not be able to get to you. Your prayer warrior that you pray with might not be able to get with you. But guess what you can do? Take the time, lay your hands on yourself and tell yourself, be healed, be delivered, be set free. You might have the praise team pumping you up to sing a song. Put your own song on YouTube. I'm telling you today, Rehearsal is over. Let me tell you what rehearsal is and I'm done. Because I done been talking already for about 40 minutes, which is way too long. Rehearsal is this. I'll give you a definition of rehearsal. Rehearsal is... Rehearsal is practicing to be able to perform. I was trying to find the, the correct definition in my notes here, but for some reason I'm being challenged to find it. But at the end of the day, I'm not gonna be defeated. You gotta understand, it doesn't take a whole lot of faith. It just takes a good quantity or good quality of faith. Everything up to this, and many of us, and this is the reason why I'm saying it's been practiced, because many times when we go through things, it's this person goes through something, this person goes through something, this person goes through something. So when we preach these types of messages to our congregation, sometimes they don't apply because sometimes people aren't going through anything. But at this particular time, everybody is going through something. Everybody. Some might not have it, but some people know someone has it. Some might not be out of work, but at the end of the day, this thing is affecting everybody. And the point I'm trying to get you to see, everything up to this point has been just rehearsal. It's just God giving you a resume, and I've said this before, God giving you a resume that what worked before is what's gonna work now. I thought about what I've been through and what I'm going through, and I was telling Elder Sanders, I've been telling a couple of my friends, and even pastors, some, some people, pastors are being challenged at this time because during their pastorship, they have never really been through a great big storm. They've been through small storms, but not great big storms. But when I look at the storms I've been through, and I'm not going to elaborate on them, but in 15 years of pastors, pastor, I could write a book. I could write a book on being $100,000 behind on your mortgage getting threatening letters from the mortgage company and the mortgage company threatening to take the property back to repossess the land. And then in God's timing, God allows that same mortgage company to erase almost $400,000 of debt on your mortgage. 
I've been through a public divorce as a pastor. You know, I thought all was gone, all that stuff. I've been through a church split. I, I can give you list on top of list. I had to do a funeral of three young ladies that died at one time. I can give you list, but my point of making it, all that was God preparing me for this moment. God was preparing me to lead the pastor, to, to lead the people I pastored through this moment. And what helped me to get through it, what helped me when you get a phone call, and I'm closing, I just gotta make this up. What helped me when you get a phone call, the same day you get a text, test, text that you tested positive, the same day you get a call that one of your major people in your church is unresponsive, and then you get another call that that person has passed. 24 hours, you get another phone call that someone else has passed in your church. What helped me to get through it? What helped me to get through it is realizing all the things I've done up to this that have been rehearsed, that have worked, it's now time to continue to perform it. It's now time to continue to do it. Be encouraged today. Don't feel sorry for me. Continue to pray for me. But don't feel sorry for me. Be happy that God has given us all the opportunity for another day to be a witness, another day to give God the glory, another day to witness to somebody that God is still in control of every situation. I trust that I've said something to you. If you don't believe what I'm saying, just take time to read this and you will see how chronologically Jesus set them up to move from rehearsal to performance. There's all kinds of principles in there. But I want to challenge you today. If you don't know God, what better time would it be for you to get to know him? If you're a backslider, if you've turned your back on God, if you've not acted the right way in the things that you know you should be doing, why not get yourself together? Some of ah, they just, they're just, you know how they talk about people having jailhouse religion. Regardless, what kind of jailhouse or, or, or COVID-19 religion, whatever it is, the Bible says, the day you hear my voice, harden not your heart. And understand this, being a chaplain, a hospice chaplain for many years, people will say, well, when people are scared and people are going to die, who wouldn't give their life to God? Trust me, I deal with people all the time and have dealt with people who even in the time of their dying still wasn't thinking about God. So if God is drawing you today, the scripture says no man cometh to him unless he draws you. If God is making you think about him, it's because he's thought about you. He's not going to reject you. And like I said, I will be here and I have one of the elders who's here. We will stay apart. That if you want to call the church, you want someone to pray with you, you want someone to talk with you, you want someone to encourage you, you want someone to give you some tools or the word of God to help you to get through this because it's the word that's going to get us through it. Nothing else. You have a choice. You can either live in fear or you can live in faith, but you can't live in both of them. I choose faith. I choose to trust him. Though you're part of Transform Life Church, thank you so much for tuning in. Before I conclude, I'm going to pray, but... Uh, I want to encourage those of you who are part of our church. Again, I've reminded you on next Sunday is Easter Sunday. Take some time to invite someone to our Facebook Live or we're probably going to be on The Transform. Those of you who want more information about our church, you can get that at www.thetransform with the ED on it, dot org. Next Sunday, we're looking to go live from our actual um, website instead of Facebook Live. We might be doing both of them. Also, tune in this week to our Facebook page, my personal page, and the church's page, Transform Life Church, because we want to give away some stuff. We want to be a blessing on this Easter Sunday. So we'll give you the way and the information how you're able to do it. Transform Life family, know that I love you. I miss all of you. Again, make sure you get on the calls this week. Make sure you check your emails. Listen to the one call now so we can keep you informed of what's going on. Before we get off here, you know it is our responsibility, those of us who are still working, the Bible says he gives seed to the sower. We're not gonna beg you, we're not gonna plead, or not even make you feel bad. This is grace giving, so at the time of the grace that God has given you, is now the time for you to give back to God. So you're part of Transform Life Church, so you know there are normal worship experience. We give you an opportunity to give, so today, again, if you wanna give, you're able to do that electronically. Cash app, dollar sign, TLC Piqua, that is our cash app app, um, 
handle dollar sign TLC Piqua. Those you want to give by Giveify, just go to the Giveify app. Look for Transform Life Church and you will see this nice logo on there in my picture. And those of you who want to give by PayPal, you can go again to our website, thetransform.org at the very bottom of that. It talks about contribution and you can click on that to give. If you want to give the old way, you write a check, uh, certainly send that to Transform Life Church, P.O. Box 628, Transform Life Church, P.O. Box 628, Pickwell, Ohio, Four five three five six, and lastly, I'm so sure Sister Julie's on here. Those of you who don't feel comfortable doing all of that or any of that, you don't want to give your information. You can give it to a very trusted uh, part of our financial team. Sister Julie will be standing by, and I'm sure she's on Facebook Live. And if she would put her phone number up again for those of you who don't have it, if you just want to give her your credit card, we will not keep that information. She will put your credit card in, and we can take your contribution. Last but not least. Remember, we are still working on our level up pledge. And again, this plead or this, uh, I don't want to say plead, this invitation is for those of you who are still working and still have income. Uh, I'm not being insensitive. Those of you who do not have income, you don't have nothing to give. And that's why the Bible says, given it shall be given because you have to have it to give. So lastly, don't forget our level up. I think we're close to half of what has been pledged. So those of you who have pledged something, some of you have already pledged your pledge fully. I've already given almost all of mine. I gave mine on yesterday, another portion. I got one more payment, but we are trying to reach that mark by May. We still want to stay on track to do these things that we've been working on as it relates to leveling up our building. So again, you're able to give any of these platforms. And if you are giving on Level Up, make sure you contact Sister Julie or email her or text her and let her know so we can make sure that money goes specifically for that point. Again, if you want to call today, uh, you want to talk to someone, call us. We will stick around for, for a little bit of time. 937-773-4004. Let's bow our heads. Father, we thank you for this moment that you've given us. We thank you for this word that we've heard. And at the end, here in Luke, you've reminded us it's not just hearing the word, but we have to receive it. And then we have to bear fruit and bring it forth in a performance. I thank you that we realize that everything that's happened up to this point in our life, the good, the bad, and the ugly has been to help us to prepare for this moment. And what has worked in the past, we have to use it because it will work now. Prayer, fasting, praise, faith, all these things are part of the components and are part of our spiritual arsenic that we continue to use to defeat the wells of the enemy. We thank you, Father, that you've not brought us so far to leave us nor forsake us. I thank you as you've healed so many people you've touched. I ask you for now to comfort those who need comfort in this moment of bereavement. I thank you for the things you've done. I thank you for the things you're able to do. Even as we prepare to give electronically, even though we're not all in the same place, I still speak the same blessing over those who give. And your word says, as we give, it's given back to us. Good measure, press down, shake and gather and running over. We ask these things in Jesus name we pray. Amen. God bless you. TLC, we will do our Zoom this week to do our socialization. We also will do our Bible class as we've done on Tuesday. I love you. I can't wait to see y'all. God bless you.